on with the show. This is it. Bam! <laughs> wow! Yeah. Hello. Larry, Good morning. Larry, What's Larry was masking up. Larry is masking up. I see Marco. Marco Polo right there. Marco Polo. Hello, oh, Marky. Hello. Where's Big Brother at? I hope he's on. Hello, Will. Will, thank you for the ink. I got it. Hello, Rosemary. Hello, Glover. Hello, Norm. Uh, hello, wow. Jim. Uh, hello, Richard. Hello, Tony. Hello, Bill. Hello, Justin. Mia. Okay. Well, have, where's she at? She's uh, she's got a blank screen. Hey, before hey, I want to I want to give I want to give a shout out to Rosemary and congratulate <laughs> her on this. Yeah, that was a good she one. Lives, she lives close to Tampa Bay, and I live in Kansas City. So uh, the tears are the tears are coming down. I, you, was hey, th I was thinking about you, Tony. I was thinking I, about hey, you. Hey, our team got spanked worse than I did on my last date. Okay, let's oh, get on with the show. Okay, one more thing. One more thing. Hold on. One more thing. Go Tampa Bay! Yay! <laughs> okay, okay, folks. Hey, I'm waiting for our brother. Uh, Frank, but uh, so far he let his little brother come on. That's right. So Marco goes through all this kind of stuff for his big brother. He's such a devoted little brother. Oh, uh, anyway, welcome each and every one of you to the whatever show this is because I forget what day it is. This, this is the pen pen pal meetup. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, Tony. First of all, what we're gonna do? Let's. Each one of us introduce ourselves and say your name and where you're from. We'll start with Tony the Master. Hey, Tony Rustici. I think uh, most of you here know me already, and uh, and uh, I want to say I'm from Kansas City. Uh, and I, hey, listen, I'm already over it, so I'm good. No more depression. I'm on to, to baseball season. And okay. more importantly, I picked up a pen, and the Super Bowl was all history. So I just I, I'm I'm good. But, okay. Uh, Next. Great to see you all. Frank. Bill. Bill from Bowie. Can't hardly hear you, Bill. I'm trying a different microphone. Is it working any better? No, that one doesn't work. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, there you go. For some reason, my window just decided to roll up. <laughs> Window shades are like that. Yeah, that's pretty much what it did. It just zoop. Anyway, so do you hear me now? Yep. A little, a little, okay. a little. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm from Bowie. I still work. I'm still poor. I still buy pens. There you go. All right, then we'll go to Mark, Mark who has his microphone off. Don't be bashful, Marky. Hi guys, I'm, I'm Mark, I'm Frank's brother, and it's great to see everybody here, and it looks like a big crowd tonight, so. Uh, Marky we'll rocks! We'll okay, we'll go to Mr. Watt, Stephen. So, I'm actually relatively new to this one, I know several of you at least. Welcome uh, Stephen, welcome, welcome. Thank you all. So Yay, I'm Stephen, good to see you. <laughs> hi Linus, hi Tina, hi everybody, everybody that I write with regularly. Um, uh, so I'm Stephen. I'm from <laughs> from North Raleigh, North Carolina, currently in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, like Bill, I still work, and I am definitely poor. I'm a grad student, so ah. I'm going to be bopping in and out a little bit. I'm still in the lab this evening, and it's, All right. it's about 7.30 p.m., and I'm still at work. <laughs> wow. right. Well, welcome back. Hey, Mia! Hello! Maya, Maya, I'm going to get it right one day when I'm dead, but go ahead. <laughs> Oh, hi there. I well, it's half past oh, midnight boy. here. I froze up. Um, another late night, I think. Um, maybe not as late as the uh, time uh, we had the Zoom with the person from India. That was really good. Um, I write a lot of letters, and I am currently writing a letter. Me too. It is in progress, it's just started. So, yeah, yeah. in progress. I haven't said thank you for your letter yet, but that's about to be written now. 
Okay, then let's go ahead and go to Mr. Justin. Welcome, Justin. You're, you're off. Your mic's off. There we go. How's that? That's good. Coming to you from the west side, Pacific Northwest, Washington State, little city called Otis Orchards. Well, suburb. I see I'm in good company with several guys. We all seem to be uh, in the hey, Somebody has a radio playing in the background. I don't know if you can turn it off or mute, perhaps. Or just turn it up. Oh. <laughs> all right. So we're done. How do you do? All right. That's Justin. Now we're going to go to Mr. Jim. Turn your mic on. Jim Jam, turn your mic on. There we go. All right. Hi, I'm Jim Chesney, and I'm from Romulus, Michigan, where right now it's minus six degrees with the wind chill. Oh. Hey, man. Woo. Woo. All right, so let's go to Lana. All right, you're next, sweetie. I'm Lannis, and I'm uh, from the best neighbors that you guys could have. I'm from Ontario in Canada. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Hi. <laughs> Richard. Um, I'm Richard from LaGrange, and it's 59 beautiful degrees here. Mr. Mr. Will. Hi, guys. My name's Will Hodge. I am from Cleveland, Texas, where it is currently 68 degrees and uh, very enjoyable. All right. We're going to bring on Mr. Norm. Norm. There you go, Norm. Look at that. Look yep. at that. Yes, I'm into, I'm into aeroplanes. I'm into aeroplanes. Um, yeah, I'm Norm from Melbourne, Australia. Um, and before anybody asks, it's about uh, 11.38 in the morning here. Um, I haven't got the foggiest idea what it is in terms of temperature because we use the Celsius scale, of course, and most of you guys use Fahrenheit. Um, so I'll have Except to find that out for you. Hey, I sorry. Can... Go ahead, mate. We can translate. <laughs> yep. You got a bunch um, of scientists here. I'll have here. to find out for you. Um, <laughs> but uh, we had a heat rain, a heat wave the other day. It got up to forty-five degrees Celsius, which is I uh, over one hundred and thirteen oh uh, Fahrenheit. But normally it's it's about seventy-five degrees Fahrenheit. Here is normally what it is but you're in uh, summertime uh, right now correct you're in summer, summer? we're in yeah. the middle of summer um and um last year at this time we had major bushfires very much like california had before um we had fires all over the country um air was thick with you know fog and pollution and smoke and all the rest of it so thankfully it hasn't been anywhere near like that this year and we're hoping it doesn't happen um but um, no, all good. We're in the middle of summer and uh, no snow, of course. Never get snow in Melbourne. But uh, great to be here and thank you for, for organising this, guys. All right. Let's move over to Grove. Her. Welcome, sir. All right. <clears throat> From Kentucky, uh, Bluegrass State, Sagersville. Good to see everybody. I know some of you on here. Uh, Tony there, uh, we send letters back and forth. I see where you sent me a letter January the 12th. Never did arrive. Wow. So probably coming. Uh, with the U.S. Postal Service, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, let's go to Rosemary. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Rosemary. I'm from Oldsmar, Florida, which, as Tony mentioned, is right outside of Tampa. And it was 78 degrees today. And tomorrow we're going to have 80 degrees. Wow. Wow. Tomorrow. That's kind of my... <laughs> Short, shorts and flip flops. <laughs> Our weather, I forgot to mention, uh, is 38 degrees. And starting tomorrow morning through Friday morning at 7 a.m., we're under an ice storm warning. Up to mm, an hunker down for that one, man. Ended, so we probably won't have any electricity. We're expecting up to a foot of snow in the next, or for the rest of the week. And where are you at? Pittsburgh. Yeah. I just got I'm sorry. I just finished digging out from 20 inches of snow 
plus an additional eight inches of snow and snowing every day this week. Y'all are crazy. Christmas <laughs> Day, we had 14 <laughs> inches Christmas Day. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. We had 14 inches last weekend. All right, let's go to Tina. I'm Tina, and I'm outside Chicago in Bensonville, right next to O'Hare Airport. If you've ever passed wow. through there, you've flown right over my house. I can guarantee it. <laughs> so we just finished digging out from about 12 inches of snow over the weekend. Okay, let's And it is currently 11 degrees, and it feels like four. Mm. Oh, okay. All right, then let's go to Deborah. Hi, I'm Deborah. I'm from New York City. Like I said, snow, 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 and more snow. And unfortunately, I have to put my pen buying aside for a while because I'm getting a puppy. So. Oh, yeah. Yay. Sorry, puppy wins. What kind? A uh, Shetland sheepdog. Be my fourth one. <laughs> that puppy may like to uh, chew on your pens. You better be careful. No, I got the best security <laughs> put away. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Bob. Welcome, Bob. Hello. Can you hear me? I can, can hear you now. Great. I'm I'm from West Texas, and it's 31 degrees. And to me, a foot of snow is obscene. <laughs> <laughs> You guys all need to move to Canada. We don't have much of anything in Toronto there right now. I'm I'm wanting to move south. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. All right, let's go to Miss Dolores. Bam. Hey there. How are y'all? I'm Dolores. I live in Oklahoma, and currently it's like 19 degrees. Saturday night it's supposed to be zero. Not really oh. happy. Yesterday, I drove to work on black ice at 530 in the morning. Didn't realize it till I started seeing all the cars and trucks smashed against the guardrails on the expressway. <laughs> I've had enough winter. <laughs> all right, let's move on to Miss Liz. Liz, if you're on, you have your microphone on mute. Liz, are you there, Liz? Liz. You're muted. In the chat, she said, uh, tell everyone Liz says hello, Liz from Washington. So I'm not hello, sure. Linda, Liz. Maybe okay. she doesn't have a mic or I'm okay. not sure the situation. All right, folks, let's go ahead and go. Steven. Uh, oh, Stephen. Yeah, Steve, we, Stephen had to get he out for a minute. Step out yeah, work. He, uh, he was just up there. He just moved back down mm -hmm. there. So, okay. So now, Tony, take it away. Hold on. Da -la -ka -la -ka -la -ka -la. Okay, Tony. Bam. Uh, well, I, I was just going to uh, tell you all that. Uh, that it's great to have you all here. Uh, I'm 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 thrilled. I I hope uh, you know when we do these these Zoom meetups for Pen Pal, at least for the ones that I'm involved with, Larry. Uh, you know we always post it on I post it on Larry's uh, his site on Facebook. Then I do one on uh, Fountain Pen Friends on Facebook. If there's a better way that uh, can you know to alert you all to when we're having these, someone said we should make an event, make it an event so this way it gets out to more people, or to make sure to to allow to alert you uh, because, you know, individually I should take a list and make sure and let you all know that we're doing it. But uh, I want to make sure you all get, get that alert. And Larry does a good job of going on YouTube to announce his zoom meetups and who's going to be on there. But, uh, but yeah, it's great to have you all here. I, 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 you know, I've been doing a lot of writing and pen buying and I thought I was done buying pens. I really thought I was <laughs> done. I don't know about the rest of you or any of you, uh, Making more purchases recently. I, I, I am. May I? May I say something? And then you can go next, Justin. Uh, it's not my fault. It's Mark and his brother's fault. Uh, I am waiting for a new, beautiful, <laughs> lovely, delicious, stunning uh, Visconti uh, Blizzard. Oh, which color? The nice. white one. And that will complete my set. The white one, yeah. Oh, yeah. That will complete my set. I have one on a fine. I have one on the medium. Then I'll have one on the broad. So, great. Can you swap those nibs, get Larry? Yeah, yeah. They're all interchangeable. Okay. All right. Then Mr. Justin had a hand up there. True confessions time here. 
you, just when you think you're done, something else, you know, catches your eye. Um, I, I cover your ears, blasphemy. I end up selling a couple of bands. Um, you know, I bought some Twisby Ecos and uh, the Vac Mini. And while they're great pens, I'm just, I've got too much ink ADHD to uh, stick with large capacity pens. I mean, demonstrators are great. I bought them because I was an English teacher in the Middle East and I love using Diamine Red Dragon to <laughs> bleh, all over their papers. That's a nice ink. <laughs> I love that ink, right? There it's you the best go. Teacher's ink. I don't know. We had this debate with some friends earlier. It's like, ah, oh, red ink's like a psychological. Well, that's why not the blood color. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, my uh, my guys tolerated me. It was great. But um, now I'm back in the states. I'm just not using large capacity. So mostly it's letter writing and journaling. So I'm going for like smaller capacity, like converter based pens. But I say all that, and then I bought a Lamy 2000 uh, based on advice from forum members. I went with a good old standard plain old vanilla medium sized nib and I'm really happy with it. <laughs> they say there's a sweet spot, but I must've got lucky. Um, Cause mine seems to just write, but I'm kind of used to fountain pens by now. I think maybe people that struggle with a sweet spot or something might just, it's a different pen. It is a little bit slightly different. The grip is a little bit different. And if you're used to like maybe a standard pen and you're shifting into fountain pens, I would probably say it would not be the first pen you'd buy. Although it does have merit for a first pen. So I don't know. I didn't see the complaints. I've been very happy with it. Tony's gotten the first letter written for it. It's on its way very soon. All right. And I uh, <laughs> hope you can read my handwriting, man. But um, yeah. And then I picked, up another, I picked up another Caveco Sport. Um, I got the Burgundy or uh, Bordeaux. I don't know how you say that. But you know, that nice deep maroon colored pen. I've been eyeballing that one for a while. So I've just added it because I really like. So I've just added it because I really like. So yeah, that's been. Hey, my Greg. Hey, life. Justin. Justin, did you get? Did you happen to get that scissors and letter opener from uh, Greg? Oh, that... yeah. Um, give me a second. I'll, I've got it in my other room. I'll pop back. Right. But yeah, it came so fast. One second. All right, Bill. Bob. 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 Then Deborah. Bob, go ahead first. Oh, and then Tank. All right, Bob first. <laughs> Help me out here, Tony. All right. Um, where'd Bob go? I'm right here. Oh, there you are on the go corner. Ahead, <laughs> I, I've already told you where I am and how. Oh, cold okay. It is. I know. I thought oh, you. No. Okay. Yeah, I thought you were gonna share something. Okay, who was next? Deborah or Tina? Deb, go ahead, Deb. Well, I was gonna buy a Mont Blanc calligraphy pen, but somebody told me that I can get a nib for my Cartier, and I gotta just find one. Anybody? Ever hear of it? You know, no. No? Okay, well, if anyone ever sees a Cartier nib, calligraphy nib, that's what I need. Go go on, uh, you might go on Slack. If you, are you familiar with Slack? They've no. got a pen group. They've got a pen, a pen group from the, uh, the ink, was it the uh, uh, addict? The uh, ink addict or the pen addict? Okay. He's got a, a thing and a forum, and you can go on there and, and type in that you're looking for one of those. You won't believe how many people will answer your ink, your, ink your, addict. Yeah, it's a pen pen addict. Pen addict. Yeah. Addict like a drug addict or addict. Yes, like a yes, like an addict. Yeah, Got like it. a drug addict, like a pen addict. Got it. Oh, okay, Maya. Well, I uh, shopped at uh, Pure Pens in the in UK. It's actually based in South Wales. And I bought rather a little lot of ink. Um, this is so dinky. This is the um, one of the little ink sample sets from Ferris um, Wheel Press. And I've just inked the pen up with it, but I haven't written with it yet. And these uh, dinky little bottles. Mm. Wow. Oh, wow. They're kitty Anyone? bottles. Anyone use that ink? Pens? Has anyone used that ink ink press, the Ferris ink wheel? I have a couple of them. I've got a green one, and my wife has a pink one, and she really likes the pink one. Um, she's that's all that she's been using in her um, uh, pilot. Um, oh, vanishing decimal, point. Her vanishing point. Her decimal. That's all she's used in that so far, and she loves it. Mm. And I picked up some samples as well. So let's see what we got—a mystery load of samples. We have got 
Sailor. Uh, I can't read that. If, um, we've got uh, Diamond uh, Candle Sparkle, um, the um, J Hair Band, um, the one with Nicole in. Uh, Oh, we're not recording. Yeah, no worries. Moon Nose Bear, because they, they sell noodles here. Um, yes, it? Also bought another Krishna Inc. I haven't even got out of the box yet. Um, we've got uh, KWC Hunter Green. No, yeah, you must be ordering from Pure so. Pens, huh? Yeah, I mean, they're really quite good, actually. Um, yeah, I just put an order with them as well. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, th this. I mean, this is quite dinky. I really quite like it. Um, the pen pal said um, she was given a, a, a full bottle of one of the inks for her birthday. She was sort of uh, just quite impressed with it. I like those bottles. They're really cool. The the, the, the Ferris wheel bottles are really look like a ball, don't they? Yes. Yeah. With like a, a nut on top. They have a new line that looks a bit like a old school pocket watch. It looks like a flat coin kind of with a screw top as well. So it's a little bit smaller, but it's a new line of colors too. It check sounds out. like some of the Avon bottles they used to have with the uh, cologne and stuff in it. I, mean, I always found myself actually looking at the scented in inks, but then there's not very much on the actual color. It's just the smell. Mm. Smell of cola or uh, licorice. Um, someone else wears said that she um, had a plum scented ink, but it's not a plum colour. Hmm. Um, so I haven't gone down that scented ink yet. I'm okay. Sure wonderful or not. All right. Uh, let's, ah, Frank, Mr. Frank from Federalist Pens is here. Ha. Huh. Howdy, Frank. I can hear a word you're saying. You're on mute. Unmute, Frank. There, there you, go. you go, Frankie. Frankie hey, Avalon's here. Hey. Hey. You left your brother hanging, brother, just hey. up here just by oh, himself. Hey. Yeah, hey. There. look at him. Look, poor little brother. Oh, oh, well. Dang. Okay, oh, Frank. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's not even uh, one man pet store, but we're good. Good, good. Okay, uh, Frank, Frank, do you uh, have you gotten any new stuff in yet? Yeah. Uh, oh, would you like to share? I actually got leather mats from uh, Mario from Girologio. And this is the new one. I was just looking at that and I was telling Nadine about it too. It's white, white leather. And what's different about this one is it's got a cork backing as opposed to the felt that he had on his previous ones. These are really nice pads. I've had one, a green one on my desk for a couple years now on it. You know, if you have them, you know about them. It makes a nice patine and, you know, you got marks from, you know, putting your stuff on it and all your pens or whatever. And you got little divots here and there and you got little stains and all. And it's, it's really, it ages well. Uh, they're on the site. These new colors I have to add, uh, gray, uh, black has been a staple, a nice uh, purple finish. I like that one. They're all leather. Uh, brown, Does the white brown. stain? Does the white stain? I... I would gather it does because they all eventually do because they're blotters, you know, they're meant to do that. You know, like I said, they age well, they patine and all. So yeah, so it's meant to be abused. That's the whole idea. So you protect your fine desk, you know. All right, can you show the purple one one more time? The purple one? Please, I missed it because oh I'm scrolling back and forth to see who's talking. Oh, I like that. That's pretty. Okay, I like that. That would go. That would go well on my desktop. What are those lists for, Frank? They're thirty. Oh yeah, they're thirty. Here's gray. There's also a nice uh, steel blue, like like a navy blue. They're uh, free. Let's see green. I told you guys, this is the one that's on my desk. This looks really good, like a a lighter wood desk or even a, a walnut one. Mine is like pine. Mine is light. That's a pretty like, one. Uh, but the green one's really nice, and like I said, I like that green one too. Yeah, and uh, orange. That's another nice one, yeah. Orange and red, uh, like a Ferrari red. Frank, somebody asked if it comes rolled up or if it comes flat pack. It comes flat pack. 
Mm-hmm. It comes I, flat back. I, I, I can attest. I've, I've had one. I rolled them up originally, but that was uh, actually a problem early on. And then I discovered a nice duck flat pack. That's like a, a gray, large uh, plastic padded mailer that works very well. That orange or cognac? Uh, the cognac is a lighter brown. Okay, you have both. I actually don't okay. have that right now. There is a lighter brown. There is a cognac. Uh, that's a light brown. And then there is a darker brown. That was one of the original uh, colors of the cognac. I, I, I want to attest to the to longevity of those pads, everybody. I bought one three years ago from Mario at the St. Louis Penn Show, and that's still on my desk and is still in great shape. Oh, he left. Does anyone else have one of those pads? Oh, you have one, Bill? How do you like it, Bill? You're on mute. You're mute. <laughs> You're still muted. Yeah, I know. I don't know why it went muted, but but I'm back. Yeah, I've got one. Hey, I want to show you. I want to show you the one that's been on my desk for a couple of years now. This is the green, and you know, at one point I doodled with the Giralogio logo and stained <laughs> that darker, and and uh, you know, a couple of years of just real close. You could see some punctures here and there, like I mm -hmm. said, uh, maybe from just me working on pens or. Uh, or bullet points or just throwing stuff on the desk, you know, again, protecting the desk and doing its job, you know. They age pretty well. They're leather, you know, they're going to, as long as you don't put scissors or a knife to them, they're going to last you a very, very long time. And it's got, uh, like I showed you, it's got a felt backing on this one. The white with the cork's a new one, so... We'll see how that does in a couple of years with somebody. <laughs> but I got a couple of them on hand. And I got plenty of green and black and dark brown and a couple singles of the other colors. So, yeah. And uh, not too much going on. Well, you guys know, we, uh, we're, I'm waiting for the green 74s, the new custom 74. I mentioned at the last one. I did get new. Vanishing, I just got a new shipment of Vanishing Point, Decimos, and 74s. I think I mentioned that they intend to stop making both the orange and the lavender custom 74, the violet. So if you are on the fence about them, you should buy them. Uh, not only from me, but anybody that still has them, because Pilot intends to stop offering them. They're going to offer their other colors. They still have the blue, the clear, the smoke, uh, the teal, the merlot. And now they're coming out with the green. But uh, I got a flash that they're going to stop offering the orange and, and the lavender violet. And I bought a couple of each of them to have them. And I can do any section because, you know, they all have this same front clear section. They all unscrew and swap out very easily. And uh, so I can do any nib size from extra fine, fine, medium, broad in the 74s. I have all of the uh, vanishing points, the current ones the gold ones, as well as the rhodium ones. And I have decimos too. And uh, what else? Uh, working with Hiram to get uh, stuff in from Magna Carta, of course. We had a great session uh, the last time. Tell us about me? those Magna Carta pins. I saw uh, Larry having a post about it. And I'd like to hear yeah. your view it on too. Frank as well as Larry's. But I don't own none of those, so I'm interested. Okay. Well, they're like Larry mentioned, I've been representing him for a couple years now. I, uh, you guys know I like uh, having Larry co-host these things. I'd rather uh, be with you guys. I'd rather have his Zoom channel and me as the co-host. And that's how we've been doing it the last uh, year or so. And I'm happy with that. I, I don't have the time really to start my own Zoom channel. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not interested in, in making money that way. I'm, I'm happy what I'm doing and, I, and I'm glad to help Larry and I'm glad to be with you guys and do this. I'm very happy doing it this way. I wanna keep doing it this way. I have a lot of people in store. I have uh, the Gillette family coming next month with luxury brands. You guys know they have a lot of brands. So Bryce Gillette is coming on board with us on the 12th. That's gonna be announced later. 
And he's going to be talking about platinum and noodlers and colorverse and all those other lines that Luxury Brands of America carries. It's run by uh, a family. It's a family business, the Gillette families. John uh, and uh, the wife, uh, Carol, and their son, Bryce. Uh, and they have their other family on board too. But they're the three main principles, if you will, of Luxury Brands of America, LBA, that are the distributors for platinum pens, uh, noodlers, inks, colorverse, D. Charles Leather, B. New, uh, Colorverse. If I left any out, there's like eight of them. If I left any out, sorry, but we'll talk about that next month. And I'm getting John Lane back. I'm working on getting John back too from Coles for Visconti. We're gonna talk about some more new products, including the new Stones edition. I have that on my site for pre-order. You guys have seen that, the new demo Visconti Homo Sapiens edition. Or uh, waiting for them to come in and I, I have a pre-order uh, on them and I, I'm offering people a chance to pre-order them as well. And they're gonna come in three great colors. They're gonna come uh, ruby, sapphire and emerald. It's gonna be the power filler. You're gonna see the whole double reserve power filler in action. This pen is totally demo. What well, are they look polished? For? Nine ninety five. Nine ninety five. One thousand dollars, nine ninety five. Yep. I had them on the site for eight hundred. Wow. We're doing the twenty off. Uh, let's go back to the Magna Carta for a minute. Uh, I'm not just trying to say something that's not true, that this pen actually blew me away. Uh, a lot of people yeah. have, uh, just because <laughs> this pen is made in India, a lot of people already assume that's a mark against them because, oh, it's another Indian pen, blah, 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 blah. Well, I hate to differ, but this pen that I reviewed is like no other. It's uh, I, I'm going to put them right up there with the big names because it deserves that to be up there with the big names. And let me tell you one reason why. Uh, a lot of time is spent by Aaron doing the prototype, the design, uh, working all the details to get everything just right. And then the quality control. I think his nephew or uncle or brother may do that, but they, they do the quality control and that's really important because for me, a pen is useless to me when that nib comes out, it, it, it doesn't have good ink flow. It's uh, uh, the, the, it doesn't have, uh, it's a rough nib. Uh, it's not a smooth nib. I like a smooth wet nib. So, and then his pens come out with an ebonite feed to die for. This pen is to die for the night it's called. It's no longer uh, on the table. That was, I think, last year's model. I, I sent him an, uh, a message a while back to see if he could bring it back because I've had about five or six people interested in that model. <coughs> and it really is a nice model. Uh, so hopefully one day uh, people will say that, you know, India makes some really good fountain pens. Don't let the name fool you. A lot of work been put in that, or I wouldn't have given it so much praise if it wasn't. You know, I'm not going to tell my viewers that a pen is all this great stuff when it's not. You know, I'm not getting nothing out of it. No, no. So if you're interested in, in that, I think Ma, uh, Frank is, aren't you the only one in the U.S. that carries his line? Frank? Yep, U.S. dealer, yep. I've been uh, representing him for a couple of years now. And uh, yeah, I carry... Seven of his brands, uh, of his regular brands, you could say regular compared to his custom one-off pens or pens he makes for special occasion and things of that nature. So yeah, I mentioned before, you have uh, everything from all acrylic pens, uh, the Waze, for example, which yeah. you do have, Larry. we went over that. Yeah. You actually forgot that you had one. You yeah, had a right. Waze from last year. Uh, that is $120. That uses a Bach nib unit, number six. Demo pen. It comes red, comes blue, comes brown, and it comes uh, red, green, and blue. RGB, all uh, different ribbon colors, which is really nice. Almost looks like a holiday Christmas pen, if you will. And uh, it's all different colors on the waves. And that one, that was $120. There's 
there's actually one below that, which really is like the price beater because it's called the executive. And maybe someone on here did buy one recently. Uh, oh, he's not on here. It's one of our players, but we'll, we'll get Dan, into that. Dan, Dan bought it. Yes, he did. The executive pen has a metal cap. Obviously, it has a metal section as well, as most of his pens do, other than the all acrylic ones. And then, of course, it has an acrylic body. So this pen is $100, Bach nib unit, rose gold plated, yellow gold plated, chrome, really nice pen. Tell me about the feed on that. Is uh, that an ebonite feed or a plastic feed? Right now, everything I have is all plastic. That okay. We went over this before. Okay. We just introduced the ebonite feeds. Yeah, we just introduced the ebonite feeds. He's in the process of sending me ebonite feeds, and it will be my job to retrofit my stock. Right, for right. That. Frank? Uh, so I, I, that'll be coming he, in. Oh. Yes, Go ahead, Tony. I was going to ask, isn't yeah. he, didn't he say he was coming out with the, with the titanium nib as well? I thought he said he was working on that. Possibly, as you guys know, uh, a lot of makers, not just him, everybody's looking for an alternative. You know, we uh, uh, we have a situation here, you know, with the gold, impre increasing prices of gold and all. It even costs more to plate now. Plating is expensive. And, uh, uh, you know, I told you guys about sourcing my nibs of Bach and all. It's costing me five hours more to get a nib from my source uh, plated. And I got to pass that on to people. So that means I got to charge five to $10 more for a plated nib buck compared to the stainless one. And you know, every other maker is going to be doing that. It's not just me. Right. Uh, and people are looking at alternative metals now, you know, for nibs, you know, and possibly titanium. It's been done before. So why not? You know, there's other companies that have titanium nibs. And I think that's, you're going to, we're going to be seeing more of that in the future, especially if gold and silver run away. It's one of the reasons why some makers have abandoned palladium because of the cost factor. Right. You know, I, I hinted at that in the past, you know, when I get into that, but you know, one of our Italian brands stopped making palladium. First they stopped offering palladium nibs. Then they went to 18 karat nibs and now they do in-house nibs. So, you know, you, I really believe we're gonna see more and more makers do that. I think our, our uh, upscale brands are gonna start bringing everything in-house. It's it's a cost factor, as well as quality, obviously. But it's also a cost factor if you can. Now back to Harry. Yeah, he uh, he did. Your own gold sheets and the nibs and stamp them. You're saving money, you know. Uh, Aurora he, Aurora does that. They're in house. Oh yeah, Aurora does that. Oh, yeah, Discovery yeah. does that. Pelican does that. Of course, all of our brands from Japan do that. Uh, we're going to be Lamy. We're going to be seeing more and more brands do that, I believe. Uh, he, he did mention, and we've talked on the side, that uh, titanium is one looking at, gold nib is another he's looking at. And sure. uh, we did talk a few days ago. Uh, and uh, don't hold me to it. It's up to him. Uh, uh, he does the ebonite feed super, just one of the best ebonite feeds I've ever tasted. He may give people an option, the plastic feed or the ebonite feed. Of course, be ready to pay a little more when you're doing ebonite, right? Sure. So. Just like uh, pay more for titanium and for gold. Yeah, pay more then, for gold. No, you know, let's, let's talk about the prices. An hour or more charge. Let's talk about the prices of his pens. Right now, they're pretty low. Uh, so. Uh, they are. Uh, I think it's, 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 it's a great deal to get a, a pen now at the price uh, because you, you're going to get a great pen. Uh, if it's anything like this night, you're going to get a great pen. Ebonite, sure. yeah, Ebonite, you can't go wrong with the Ebonite feed. Seriously. Yeah, there are, there's the executive at $100. There are uh, two pens uh, at 120 There are two pens at 140 uh, the emotions pens with the pen holder, the little uh, pen holder slash inkwell, the small one, 150. And then you move into the elements pen, the pneumatic fill that we've been talking about, that is 160. Now, that's been out for a couple years. That has been out pretty much the whole time I've been dealing with him. It's just that the night, the all black one is the newest one. Uh, 
Yeah. I've had the all brown one. I've had the all blue one. And I've had the green and black one. So right now I'm out of all of them. So Frank, real all, quick, all mine. So real quick, Frank, uh, help me out on this. Now, is he going to send you the ebonite feeds once he gets those done for the yes. feeds you have now or not? You're just going to yes. go with the plastic feed, yes or no? Yes. Okay. I'm waiting for ebonite feeds. Okay. So. Go ahead. I, I saw. I saw the. Oh, he had one that had an overlay on it on his site. I think it might have been on yours. It might have been on yours. I can't remember. It it's wasn't. Called Pride. It was when we saw last last show on the show. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, are you? Is that something that you'd have to order pre-order from him, or is that something you'll carry in your stock, Frank? I'll probably eventually carry it. We mentioned this on the uh, show. You were there too. Right. Yeah. Twenty twenty. It came out along with uh, another model. Uh, the plus, the plus model. They both came out in 2020, and of course, as you know, yeah. I wasn't getting anything from India. Case in point, Mario has been waiting weeks and months for leather for Girologio. You know, it's just that the supply chain has been very, very bad. You know, uh, India's been sh shut down. People have been sick. It's one of the hardest hit countries. Right. Uh, the brothers actually weren't doing very much last year. They came out with these pens but of course they were selling them directly on their site so i'm getting those type of pens so i have actually not had a pen shipment from here in basically in about a year now i had it at the beginning of last year and that was it before <coughs> the pandemic hit and we had to lock down so i'm looking forward to a lot of things from him i'm looking forward to ebonite feeds to new pens there's another pen we haven't even talked about yet that's in the works so i'm expecting to get that's going to be below $50. Wow. I'm not even getting into that yet. But that's going to be a game changer. There's going to be a pen that's below $50. In fact, this pen's going to be below $40. We'll get into that. That pen will not have an ebonite feed, unfortunately. They keep the cost down, it will not. A plastic feed. Hey, Larry, I have a, I have a question. When you did the uh, Waves, it's Mark. When you did the Waves uh, video, when you wrote with that pen, um, how how was the uh, feed with that pen? It was okay. It was, it was you know. Do, uh, would I buy another one? Yeah, yeah. Well, worth the money, I think. I mean, no, you're not going to get that uh, same kind of feel with the ebonite on it. No, definitely not. But it's a decent nib uh, feed on it. So if you're if you thinking that okay I'm going to order one from Frank like that red one Larry has uh, because Larry says it's so great well if it doesn't have the Evernight feed you're not going to get that same result so let's get that right. clear real quick but you're going to get a decent you're going to get a decent uh, uh, writing experience in my opinion with the pen.